subscribers thank you for coming back if you're new to this channel subscribe and share press the notification button mm -hmm. so that every time i post a video you get the notification thank you i hope you enjoy this episode and it's going to be about lessons in friendship let's get into the video welcome everyone today's episode we're going to talk about lessons in friendships and everything in between so i have my friend here called grace and she's going to tell you about herself Hi, I'm Grace. I am a BCom student in KIT and I am not a professional psychologist but I consider myself to be one. Also a relationship coach. I'm quite an interesting person if you get to know me. Yeah. Okay, so today's lessons we are going to... I'm a person who likes journaling my stuff. So I wrote down some points and like yeah. we shall talk about uh, each of these points and also shout out to the person behind the camera <laughs> Okay, so are you ready? Yeah <laughs> Okay, so the first point I had is um, Friends among the lessons the first lesson is like a friend is someone who always choose you yeah. They will always show up for you They'll be there for you like I feel like that's a unique way because not everyone gets to not everyone gets to make a friend who will come and be patient with you with your personal traits you know yeah. so if that if you get someone who can tolerate you you know they will just accept you the way you are so i feel like yeah a friend will always choose you what do you have to say about it yeah i do agree in the sense that the fact that you're already friends with that person that would mean that they have chosen you to be among I mean, among their friends, you understand? So that would mean that they have made a decision that when this person is in need, knowing what a friend is supposed to be, that they've made the decision that when Jean, for example, I've made a decision that when Jean needs me, I have to be there because that's one of the responsibilities of being a friend, you understand? If you have to call it a responsibility, you know? So, yeah, I'm in agreement. Yeah, I agree with her. So the next point will come from you. <laughs> Great. Um, I would say brotherhood, sisterhood. Um, over the years that I've lived, I've made friends that have become family to this point where I can literally count them as family to a point where sometimes I forget that they're we're not blood related, you know. So one of the lessons that I would take is that when you find a good friend, believe me, make sure that there's that brotherhood, sisterhood that you build. So yeah, one of the strongest bonds sometimes it bypasses that which is of blood strangely by the ideas yeah because so. they always tell us blood is thicker than water but then like the more you grow sometimes <laughs> no no it's not it's always true, true. Okay, it also true. depends it depends yeah, it depends because yeah. sometimes even the more you grow you're making friends who are actually more family than your yeah, actual exactly. family they show up more than your actual family they are always there for you more than your family exactly so, so i think it just depends from person to person so my other lesson would be like uh, friends are intentional uh, they'll give you in a way that you give your friend grace time you know in case they're not reaching out to you you can't come with questions like why aren't you calling me that's actually that's actually something very negative I don't feel like um, when someone calls in like why aren't you calling me they don't know what's going on in your life otherwise so maybe you should like as a friend you can always call and find out how they're doing then you can always know why they were not calling why they're not texting but then this thing of like why aren't you calling me why aren't you doing this you understand what i'm going to say yeah because i do agree with what you said but can you just elaborate or define what you mean by grace time okay grace time literally like someone may take their time off you know some people tend to withdraw from their friends when they're going through stuff like uh, they don't know maybe how to express themselves because yeah. I don't think everyone has um, the ability to express how they are feeling what they're going through so someone may withdraw that time that they take off 
with yeah. their friends. So for you, that time you give them is the best time you get. Like you're leaving them to either go through what they're going through in case they have communicated to you. Then if they haven't, then you can reach out to them and ask them. Yeah, okay. So it's more like giving space to your friends when you see that they're not okay. Yeah. But then for how long am I supposed to give the space? Well, that's where communication comes comes in, you know. You're supposed to communicate and, like, you, you can ask them, how can I be there for you, you know. Some people want to be alone. So that space is not like you're not going to talk anymore, you're not going to. Someone's yeah. space may be like, uh, if we're used to going out all the time, I may be like, you know what, this month we're not going out because I'm going through this and this, right. So the grace time you're going to Thank give me, like, this... <laughs> <laughs> the grace time you're going to that's not me guys the grace time you're going to give me is like that month I've told you I'm going through something so you'll let me be like that's you'll be there you'll support me as a friend that's already support actually because you're supporting my decision right and yeah so that's the first time um, I totally agree with what you said but then there comes a time where your friend totally cuts you out which makes it difficult I feel like that's where also as friends we need to learn that your friends cannot be there for you if you do not let them know what you're going through. I understand when you experience or when you're facing a challenge, it's okay to take some time to yourself, but the least you can do is tell your friends that, guys, I'm going through something, I cannot share it right now, I would love some space. You understand? Yeah. So I feel like that way you also create a boundary so that they know that I shouldn't cross this boundary. Because if you don't tell me what you're going through, Bruh, I'm just gonna come. How will I know? <laughs> exactly, how will I know? I'll come and I drop the way we usually do. And for you, you might feel like they're not giving me space. Yeah. So maybe we should just learn to say, I need space. And as friends also, when you're told you need space, that somebody <laughs> needs space, please do understand. This goes to me also. I need to understand yeah, that. Go to <laughs> yeah, let me give them space. When they're comfortable enough, they will speak out. You know, so I would add on to that, like give but grace time. Like, how do you think someone should uh, ask their friends that? I need to get you to them. Okay, I at most I love giving hypothetical question. <laughs> we like talking about it before we started this. What I do is just give a hypothetical question. Sometimes they do not know that's what I'm going through, but I'll just ask, like, guys, if this and this, you know, what are your thoughts on it? Based on their response, I get to see whether should I tell them, should I not, you know. So maybe so ask a random, questions. yeah, sometimes it's just random questions, but they've gotten so used to it that even when I'm actually asking for a certain purpose, they cannot tell. Oh, so, we can. Actually, when you <laughs> ask those random questions, you're all like, okay. Okay, I always have an Is she asking about herself, you know? So you okay, know, I always have an But that, that's how I actually also help my friends to be vulnerable. When I bring up a topic that I see my friend is not comfortable to speak up to speak about then I bring up a hypothetical question we dive deeper into it and at a later stage you hear them saying by the way guys um, I've been you know <laughs> so yeah I would yeah that's true anyway yeah, the hypothetical questions are it helpful. works it works because either way you realize the person asks but they mean they're asking for themselves yeah. and if they're friends you know, you know. Oh, just send a reel. <laughs> Record a reel for them if they are not on Instagram. And then you send just send a reel. Or just, relate. You know, they'll relate. They'll or just send a reel. Through. They'll know, like, you know. Reels also work. <laughs> just don't put it out on your status out there as, you know, yeah. limit doing that, guys. Yeah. Only let close people know what is going on with you. So, yeah. Okay, getting back. Um... <laughs> my next point would be being vulnerable like your friends do create the platform where you can be vulnerable enough so that's one of the lessons or i would say one of the advantages of having friends it's quite hard to be vulnerable to your family because there are certain things you cannot just easily share with them i would say it's quite hard to be vulnerable to people you live with you know <laughs> it's so easier to be vulnerable to someone who's far away like miles away from you than to someone it's easier especially when you're texting but in person i feel like would have to filter out so i'm grateful that i have friends that i can be vulnerable with that's something that we shouldn't take for granted yeah so yeah and want to add like being vulnerable it doesn't mean that 
it's just telling you my weak points like what i'm going through is only the laws right yeah it also means like it has the positive side i'm going to come and tell you something that uh, something some, maybe a win i've maybe passed something i've got something yeah, good yeah, i'm sure. going to come and be open about it and tell you i excelled in this i excelled and start to share the joy because your friend's joy is literally your joy right yeah so whatever they're going through on the other side where they're on their laws or they're getting wins you know it's still being vulnerable so yeah i think yeah so, actually that's a good point because when you speak about people being vulnerable i feel like you speak of showing your weaknesses to people like only when you're at your lowest but that too it's more of like being open about your life at large to someone so that's really a good point yeah. never thought of it that way uh, yeah guys okay, be vulnerable yeah. you should <laughs> the one <laughs> <laughs> this goes to you <laughs> I think another lesson is it's okay to have different kinds of friends, you know. Friends who are it doesn't mean you know, sometimes you're lucky you have a friend I don't think you can have a friend who has like who has it all. You understand what I'm trying to say? Yeah. I may say I'm introverted or I may say I'm extroverted. No, like I may have those parts of me and I have like friends who are you know your friends complete you the whole you because like you have different personalities that's mm -hmm. the fact you have different personalities so please keep going you don't agree keep going she <laughs> doesn't agree because i feel like you have different personalities like all your friends may represent like okay let me give an example i may have like right now where we are i may have these friends of mine right and if they meet my friends back in uganda they may be completely different people but they're it's not like we have this, they have similar things, but each of them represents a part of me. You understand? Yeah. yeah like, yeah, like <laughs> she now agrees. Okay, <laughs> I may I want to put in a word like um, I don't know. Okay, let me first start with let me say school. If I have a friend I've, I've met from school, we have something similar that we study the same thing yeah. maybe we are determined like we are being we are pointing at a certain thing like we're going to this is what we want to be right mm -hmm. and we have become not just classmates i mean like a friend who you <laughs> so far you are friends with because not because of class but like you have the same determination right yeah then you also have a friend who you're going to talk to it's not like you're going to, you're going to only come to a person when you you want to pour out as if they are therapists no yeah. i mean like you know they'll advise you you know they can say this like you know the other person may not you understand what i'm trying to say yeah like it your your, no. your different friends bring out different parts of you so i feel like it's okay to have different types of friends because mm -hmm. they bring out that's the whole you <laughs> you understand what i'm trying to say like not entirely on the whole you but like i i do understand what you're trying to say maybe i would put it in this way like yeah. maybe i would say that friends shouldn't expect us to just have a, our circle like i'm gonna go out of the circle that we have right now is it am i, am I right like okay no expect that your friend is going to have other friends and that should be okay no it's it's not, not, it doesn't mean you're cutting no, it's not that you're cutting the person off, but understand that if I make someone a friend the same way I made you a friend, there's something that I see in them. There's mm -hmm. some connection <laughs> between the two of us. Maybe we're aligned in Bible study and we become friends through Bible yeah. study. And then I get to understand or see that yeah. we can actually be more friends. I mean, we can actually be more than a Bible study friend. You understand? Yeah. We become more than well, that. Well, you have a friend, friend who is not in that, that category, yeah. but has another personality that exactly. you also yeah. have. So, hmm. friends, let's understand that it's okay for your friends to have other friends. You're not being replaced because that would sound like somebody's replacing you. Yeah. There's this thing that we have, like somebody getting close to my close person. Yeah, it, it, it happens. It happens. It happens. It's you not a good thing, happen. by the way, when you see somebody getting close to one of your close. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like getting close to your close person, you start feeling betrayed. You're like, um, I thought that was our thing. You understand? But if but we have then, our thing, you should let it be our thing. <laughs> yeah, you should let it be our thing. 
but some of us guys speaking for myself here <laughs> I'll have our thing, our thing, which is similar to everybody else's thing. To the point where I'll go, you not good. <laughs> what do you mean? But you know, I love you, man. I got you. <laughs> okay, but okay. No, these are no. It's just what, it, like it, we are human. It, it it happens, but it's also inevitable, you know. So yeah, like someone can have five close people, like close friends that they speak to. You understand? Yeah. Parts of friend, like you have parts of your life that you speak mm -hmm. to this person about. So it's like you have five close people. So others would just want to be the closest yeah. among the five. And you always but that's have... betrayal. You're limiting me. <laughs> and networking. I'm supposed to network here, please. No, but also it, it's possible that I'll have maybe many friends, but you're among my close friends. It does not yes. mean that if I make other friends, they are close like you are. You understand? Wait. Yes, but they are so, friends who can be very confusing, <coughs> and I think I'll be part of them because she's a friend. <laughs> she goes, she goes, she, go, she makes a new best friend. But okay, not a new, not a best friend to say, but I just make a friend. Somebody once told me like we're even confused. Are you crushing on anyone? Because one moment you are treating that guy with hugs and all that, and then the next moment I saw you doing the same to the other one. You were. They were like, does this girl ever ever crush on anyone or she just treats everybody the but, same? You know, okay, I wouldn't say I treat people the same. That would be a lie. But, okay, there are no words for it. Okay, but it's okay. It's okay to have different kinds, kinds of, of friends, friends for yeah. different <laughs> things. They are your loved ones. And you still love them. It doesn't mean that you're replacing them. Yeah, no one behind the camera right now does yeah. not agree. Yeah. Because I'll, I'll, so there is this point that um, Grace wants to bring up, but... No, 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 I'm not going to bring it up, but I'm just... I thought about it. I'm not in agreement. And I also don't confuse people. Like, people know their place with me. So make sure that people know their place with you. If you have your close friends, make sure that they feel that they are your close friends. Don't make them question. I'm... Don't make them doubt their friendship with you, the level of their friendship with you. So let's stop misleading people. <laughs> no, 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 like, you know, let's stop misleading people in the sense that there are those that would make you feel like yeah, suddenly they're your best friends or, you know, just because you shared one story with them, they feel like, oh, me and this person, we are so close. No, bro, maybe you caught me in a weak moment. You know, just understand that I have my close people. So let's not confuse the level of friendships that we have. And let's stop feeling bad. If you already have your close people, have your close people. You know, because that would make you such an open book that with everyone else, but you're so open. Are open book. No, no, no. And I don't think it's a bad thing. It's just like, it's just someone else's personality that they can talk to anyone. Like, um, they don't mind talk, telling anyone. Like, you find someone, you find them maybe uh, seated somewhere, and then they are sad, then they tell you their problem. Like, for them, they have no problem with you. Okay, all right. So, the next lesson um, is respect. Respect is very important in friendship. Yeah. Like, I feel like that's a very important lesson. Uh, respect in lines of, like, respecting your friend's boundaries, you know. Uh, I don't think I've encountered this, a situation where your friends are going to force you to do something that they know very well that you're not interested in or you do not actually do um let me just base it maybe let's say religion maybe you don't you're a muslim yeah. and your friends are christian and i feel like if you force your friend to uh there is a difference between telling them about your religion and also forcing them to do what you're doing. So that's crossing a boundary. Yeah. Then um, an example would be, we are friends, right? So it doesn't mean every time we're going to joke about something, you're going to bring in my personal things. Yeah. And most times, maybe we're with other friends. We are in other people actually, but because you're my friend, and I told you something, maybe about my family or something that is actually personal. And then you bring it up in a joke. I feel like that's crossing a boundary. Yeah, that's definitely crossing Yeah. So I feel like 
respect is just one thing that is really supposed to be important in a friendship respect your friend because as a person you also want to be respected you want it feels good when your friends respect you and you also respect them yeah yeah to add on to that i would also say like just respecting who a person is don't try to don't try to change who the person is if they are comfortable with certain things it's okay to try to help your friends to improve or to get out of their comfort zone but we should understand there's a limit to it if you have tried and you see that okay they don't want to maybe allow them to process on their own when they feel the need to do so then let them you know get out of the comfort zone on their own so i think also respecting the friend that you chose with their character their traits their flaws and everything just respect that this is who they are that's not to say accept certain flaws that you know would come and destroy your peace i'm not saying accept such things but accept who the person is yeah i would give an example of if i drink and my friend does not drink even though they've said oh some you know i've never experienced that i would want to experience it one day it does not mean that that very day when we go out and i'm drinking i'm like but you've been wanting to experience this thing it's about time you do it yeah. for as long as they have said no and no is a no you know so i should back off and respect them that this is who they are even though at some point they had said they want to try it that's an example that i would give so. respect the decision someone yeah. makes like i feel like at this point when someone says something it's their decision let them make it you can try to uh talk to them about it but yeah. then don't make the decision for them respect what decision they have made yeah sometimes also we need to let our friends learn respect their decision after you have given them your two cents and then you walk away yeah you know so yeah i think the next lesson was yours <laughs> was it continuing on the lessons of friendship um another lesson would be we do have season of friends in life they might be in your life for a certain season or for a certain purpose so if i can say sometimes at most it's actually colleagues classmates yeah such kind of people we need to understand that a friendship such as that is it necessarily meant to last forever we never know some yeah. of them have actually lasted i've had a colleague i still talk to them right now i used to work together but others we stop being friends you know I stop serving their purpose and they stop serving me, you know. Yeah. So we need to understand that in friendship there are those ones that are very very much seasonal yeah. and we just need to move on. And it doesn't it doesn't mean that it's supposed to end badly. Yeah, it doesn't, doesn't end, end badly. It no? doesn't end badly. Sometimes they it, it can do, it's not like drifting away as such but it it doesn't mean it's, it, it is it's drifting away. Supposed, okay, it's drifting, it's away, drifting away but, but like if it's season it doesn't mean like we're going to cut each other off in bad times or yeah. it can just end well you know we, uh, we no longer work together so you know we have all moved on if you both move on together then well that's good yeah it's like the drifting apart depends on where you're at in life what you're doing even in life the environment that you're in because you might move from one place to another obviously their friendship is bound to end if it was a colleague or a classmate you understand so it's okay we i do understand we get attached to people get attached to friends but then we should understand or be able to see which one is a season of friendship and which one is a lifetime friendship yeah though i believe in friends like forever friends you know it ain't true <laughs> it is true it's not people are with every together. friend not but how many friends have you had in life <laughs> exactly no like my life is still some going. might be for a week <laughs> some might be no, for a month i for say it, i believe oh, okay. in uh, okay. forever friendship because i have okay. seen it i have seen it yeah, yeah we, we have friends exactly. from pre primary so it's back. possible i believe it's not like you're going to make friends with an intention of like we are going to be for a season is that thing it will just happen on yeah, its it, own it is what it is yeah kind of a but i believe that you can be friends forever it's possible no this is not to this life i mean this friendship lesson is not to disregard the fact that people can become friends for a lifetime as earlier on we spoke about brotherhood and sisterhood you understand yeah. those kind of friendships are also there but then we also need to acknowledge the seasonal friendship 
So yeah, you shouldn't yeah. think it's bad. Yeah. A lesson I've got in friendship is you should have friends who pray for you. Mm -hmm. It's it's important because there are times when maybe you feel <laughs> very low and you can't pray even by yourself. Like you just sit and think instead of like praying. So if you have a friend who you can call and tell them, hey, this is what is going on. Can you pray for me? Like I feel like that's a that's yes. a very good <laughs> thing, you yeah. know. Uh, if you have friends who pray for you, when you're down, they can pray for you and they can pray with you, you know. It doesn't matter if uh, you're going through something or not, even when you're happy because people have a thing of praying when it's only the bad times. Yeah. But even the good times, I can be here and I'm praying for my friend. Oh my God, may you help them get a visa? What are, you know, something like that. So, because I just know we can talk about things, right? But then as I'm making my prayer, I'm going to pray to God about it. So if you have friends that pray for you, it's a blessing. Yeah, you mentioned that when you call them, they are going to uh, pray for you. Sometimes you don't even need to call a friend, you know. Like she said, we are just sitting there and we are talking about maybe studying, feathering your studies and you hear your friend say, oh, I want to study in Italy and you're like, Italy. <laughs> and you're like, okay, um, they desire that. You take note, you know, of what your friends are saying. As much as we joke, you need to also still take note of what is important that they said and you pray for them. So they don't necessarily need to come to you and pray. I mean, say, pray for me about this and that. You need to take note also about what your friends are going through and you pray for them or what they desire. So I feel like that's really one of the greatest blessings a friend can give you. Uh, okay, I think we are literally done with the lessons but there is one more i think that's communication yeah uh communication between friends it's really important because if you don't communicate like she said earlier if you don't communicate what you're feeling what you're going through or you tell your friend basically like communicate with your friends that's what's going to keep the bond going for example now in case long distance we are here our friends are back in our countries but we still communicate you know you still have they still know what's going on in your life because you talk you communicate they're still your friends but then you realize that the moment you stop doing that for let me say a long distance there's a way you just drift, drift apart um i don't know if you can i can i don't know if i can call you a friend if i call you it's okay if we don't talk for some months here yeah? but then if i call you and there is no hesitation we can still pick up from where we stop. I think that's a friend, you know. It's not. It's, it's not that. Now. That yeah, that's sister, sisterhood. Yeah, because I don't think if I call you and then we're just silent, we don't have what to talk about because we have been in. We are long distance friends. And even I don't think. <laughs> I don't think there's any communication going on there. So yeah. Yeah, but I think also not just in long distance. I think it also has to do with even your friends that you stay with. You need to communicate. Sometimes we wake up in a very bad mood, you know. And me, I'll come to your room and start laughing. So you just need to tell me, not a good day today, man. Yeah. You know, I know sometimes we don't even... I think we have reached a point where, yeah, just maybe give a sign, like, not today. But I think we have also reached a point where even when your friend actually tells you that it's not a good day, you still tease them, you start joking around and thinking that maybe boundaries. they are joking. Boundaries. Yeah, that's what we need to now also put, learn to set back the boundaries and respect them. From the point when we started becoming friends, I believe that when somebody told you, you would understand. But now we've gotten so comfortable with one another that you can literally see someone who's frowning throughout the day, but you still want to poke them and you still, you know. So as much as uh, we need to learn how to communicate, we should also understand when our friends communicate and take in the message, take note yeah. that this is what my friend has said. But uh, what she said, I have friends that I don't talk to every day. We can take, I don't even know, I think half a year. <laughs> but oh. yeah, like you can take half a year, but that one day when they call you, you know, you, you can pick easily up. pick it up, you know. Those kind of friends, you need to acknowledge them and be like, now this is somebody who's very much matured and understands friendships. 
but this is not to say don't communicate with your friends yeah you should do that half a is a lot it's, yeah <laughs> it's, no it's, it's, it's a lot it. it's a lot yeah but there are those friends that you really spent quality time with in person that over the phone kind of yeah but when then they call you that one time again again you go another half a year and you know there are such kind of friendships yeah, but yeah the key is communication the same way you want to communicate in a relationship understand that also this is a relationship just a different kind of relationship you need to keep the communication going if you expect your friends to let you know what is going on in their lives i feel like you should do the same for them yeah, so, yeah. by the way i i feel like those one-sided things i tell you what's going on in my yeah. life yeah you tell me what's going on in your life no you don't ever tell me what's going on in your life i don't think we are friends it's like but, having a therapist bro yeah like, <laughs> i can't come in i can't come telling you everything that is going on in my life but i've never had any single thing from you it's not that you can't open up but i expect you as my friend okay yeah. expectations is something else now but also as a friend you're going to we're going to reciprocate the energy yeah no, it's just one of the responsibilities yeah, it's just, like those unspoken rules about friendship yeah you're supposed to do it whether yeah. you like it or not yeah you know so yeah um to add on communication there is no way that i'll ever be there for you if you don't create a platform for me i've been in positions where i was a friend people considered me their friend but i didn't consider them my friends because I didn't create a platform for them to be there in the time of need. You understand? That's how a bond actually grows stronger. That when a person is there for you, when they do some action for you, then you feel like this person has my back. You know, you begin to trust them more. So we need to also communicate so that we allow our friends to be there for us in a time of need so that we can be there for them. Because if it's one-sided, I feel like it would be hard for me to come to you I've also learned that's why now I have to be vocal, you know, before I wasn't, but now I learned that you need to create a platform for your friends to be there for you. Don't shut them out. That's the only way, in fact, that you can create that wow. strong bond. So we really need to communicate. Yeah. Yeah. That's true. And a great friendship solves very many needs. Yeah. Well, uh, hoping you really enjoyed and learned yeah. something. Um, so before we end, Sheen Rowena, what is friendship to you? Okay. Saying that you are a person that easily makes friends and has a number, quite a number of friends. You, she really has a number of friends. She can make a friend in a day no. so easily. No, you, you're you friendly. Are. It's not a bad thing, it's a good thing. So what is friendship to you? Okay, I'll define friendship. I'm going to read a Bible verse. From First Corinthians thirteen four to eight, it says, "Love is patient. Love is kind. It does not envy. It does not boast. It does. It's not proud. It does not dishonor others. It's not self-seeking, and it's not easily angered. It keeps no record of wrongs. Love, <laughs> love, love does not delight in evil, but rejoices in the truth. It protects, trusts, and always hopes." You know so we're going to replace that love with like friendship because love is doesn't mean only romantic what it's also friendship like you know no more friendships right yeah. so if we replace that part of love is patient i would say friendship is patient it's kind it does not envy you're not easily angered like it's not proud i'll just define friendship like in this whole scripture because i wouldn't expect my friend to be uh, jealous of me yeah. um, I wouldn't expect them to be envious of me like of course now I would expect us to be love each other respect each other like the verse says it's kind we are kind to each other so yeah that's friendship to me that whole if you quote that whole Bible verse just read it like that's how I take friendship it should be kind, peaceful, not easily angered. It's, it's uh, this part. It's not self-seeking. You don't only caring about yourself, but also your friend. Yeah. So yeah, that's friendship. I don't think I could have answered it any better. Um, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I cannot even try to elaborate further on that. That says it all. Like that's it. So yeah, 
So how would you make a friend? <laughs> if someone comes to you and tells you, how do you make a friend? How would you do that? Hi. <laughs> <laughs> by the way, it's not it's not, it's not complicated. It's not complicated by the way. It's just it's just that these days people find it they're proud. They're proud. Someone cannot come and find and be like, oh hey, can we be friends, you know? And also Pray to God. <laughs> Pray to God. Make it a prayer point if you have to. If you're not someone who can go out there and talk to someone, hey, can you be my friend? Can you do this? Tell God, help me find the right people in my life. Help me find the right friends in my in my life. And he will. Yeah. And also, her point is really good. No, like just say hi. Greet people. You know. Yeah. Because I don't think you just jump into somebody's conversation and people's conversation without having to yeah. them. So as much as people have their comfort zones, I would say, just begin by saying a hi. Yeah, it's actually called a calculated risk. Take that calculated risk, go and try it your best, be bold. <laughs> and you don't do it with an aim that, okay, this is my target, I'm going to say hi to this person so that we can become friends. No, what if there's no connection there, you know? So just greet people, randomly just talk to people when you meet people, especially if you're in a foreign country. As an international student bro greet your fellow people just say hi before you know it some of them might be your friends so it begins with greeting that's how it say how do you i like that part where you say you don't go with an intention of like i want this person to be yeah. my friend you just simply greet them and you don't know what comes out of the conversation you may have and it may not be like it's not like sometimes you're going to have similar interest at the same time because people have this thing of we don't have anything in common we can't be yeah. friends you're going to miss out on a good friend because I, you judge them by not having similar interests there's something else about them that you may have not like found out in like a conversation you may have had or something like that yeah. so yeah so it's like don't judge a book by its cover sort of yeah because all the friends I have here, if I judge them, <laughs> the first impression, me. the first impression, not even there, just by looking. If I had said, "Oh uh, no," I had, like the vibe. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> that vibe, you know. Don't judge someone. Don't judge don't someone because you know, you know people from that country, and you're like, "Oh yeah." People and me mm. and the people from that country, there's no vibe. Yeah. Don't do that. Yeah. Like I met a friend from Ethiopia. Believe me, we vibe. <laughs> Don't judge by its cover. Yeah. Book by its cover. What did I say? Sure. Don't judge a book by its cover. Yeah. Yeah, so just go with the flow. Same yeah. applies with a relationship. Don't judge. <laughs> if you're one into looks, bro, it's gonna mislead you. Don't yeah. judge. Just go with the flow. Say hi and you see where it takes you. And also even the first impression, don't judge on that. Because you yourself, you have given wrong impressions. <laughs> Just so give yeah. yourself a chance that you, I mean, give people a chance you want people to give you. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So, bro, say hi. <laughs> <laughs> Take that risk and yeah. greet someone and make a friend. Yeah. So, I think that's how you make a friend, right? Yeah. We yes. shall talk about how we met some other time and tell you guys how we made friends and that will be another episode but thank you guys for watching this video um give it a thumbs up share with your friends share with your family share 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 with everyone yeah thank you so much like I like appreciate. like subscribe <laughs> subscribe <laughs> and channel. subscribe tell your friends to subscribe everyone you share to tell subscribe yeah also share in the comments tell us what yeah you, what, what are your in yes. here, like yeah, what are, what are your takes on what we said? We on might friendship. Right what are your lessons on yeah. friendship? Like, what have you learned in your friends? Yeah. Teach us. We want to learn. <laughs> <laughs> okay, thank you guys. Bye. See you in the next episode. Fuck you, three.